Hello everybody and welcome to the MNTV and your latest Liverpool news update. My name is Dan Club. I'll be here for the next 25 minutes, half an hour, however long you guys like, I guess. Or until I get bored or my voice gives up, um, whichever one comes first out of the above. Essentially, talking about all the latest things in the world of the Reds. Feel free to get involved, comment as we go along, have your say, ask me any questions, whatever you like really. Um, it's an open forum. Um, for anything and everything. Not necessarily saying I bring anything and everything up, but we'll see how we get on. Um, and Pedros Baniola is kicking us off with a, a surname and a name to be very proud of there with a housey. Um, yeah. Is S? Yeah, S is next to a D. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess you meant howdy. But either way, hello, mate. Hope you are okay. Um, yeah, sad. Some news. Liverpool, Andre, Fluminense, Copa Libertadores, etc, etc. Stan, hello my mate, Craig Flynn. Hello my mate, hope you are both very well on this Tuesday afternoon. Um, definitely a type, I thought so mate. Yeah, don't worry, I had you back, it's all good. Um, and Porek Fabi, um, what's the crack, lads? Um, yeah, I'm all good mate, hope you are as well. Um, I say I'm all good. You can probably tell by my voice. I'm still ever so slightly under the weather, but we're getting there. If I was like 80% last week, I'm like 95% this week. So no sympathy, please. We are getting there. Um, yeah, Andre Fluminense, of course. Loads to talk about there. It's been chaotic, really, in the world of this transfer, this transfer saga, pretty much since day one, because obviously... There was loads of reports suggesting Liverpool wanted to get the deal done in the summer. We've already known now that we spoke to Fluminense about it. We made a proposal to them, to the Brazilian club. They said, no, we want to win the Copa Libertadores. Come back when that's done and we'll talk about January. Fluminense have since gone on and won the Copa Libertadores. I imagine a lot of you watched it on Saturday night on BBC3 to um, check out Andre and indeed just enjoy a decent game of footy, which it was. Very entertaining, a little bit wild at times, people headbutting each other and fights going on in the middle of the pitch while the game was, Andre was passing by with the ball and two people just scrapping, um, a little bit mental. But as expected, ever since that really, the noise around the midfielder has ramped up a notch or two. And Liverpool have never really gone away in all of this. And the first one was kind of reports saying that Liverpool were there in attendance, Fulham likewise, and also Arsenal likewise. And Arsenal's interest is interesting because Edu went down there quite recently to have a conversation with Fluminense. And I've seen reports as well today that maybe Fulham are in the lead for the signature. That's not my understanding. I still believe Liverpool are very much the front runners, but it remains to be seen on that. Um, a couple of news stories I wanted to bring you about Andre it come from various different sources, to be honest. Um, initially, I'll come to the Fabrizio Romano one, who said this morning for court offside, he said, Andre seems to drop a hint over his future after winning a couple of Zorros with Fluminense, and for sure he remains someone appreciated by Liverpool. As previously confirmed by the player, they wanted him in the summer, but then he and Fluminense decided together to reject the interest and wait a bit longer. He goes on to say the Brazilian midfielder remains on Liverpool's list, but from what I'm hearing, that's Romano, not me, it's not only Liverpool, but top other top clubs from Europe as well. There are several others trying to understand the conditions of the deal, how much Fluminense would want to at the moment. It's evolving, and I think the next two or three weeks, the situation will be more clear. He then says Liverpool are still interested, but let's see the coming weeks. What will be Fluminense's price? He mentions it might be between 35 and 40 million euros to sign him in January. So, yeah, Liverpool's still very much into it. And I think the interest of European clubs isn't anything new and it's to be expected because I thought it was brilliant in the final, actually, to be honest. And if teams weren't already looking at him and going, ah, fancy a little bit of that. I think that performance on such a big occasion um, will definitely have peaked a few more clubs going, do you know what, he might be the real deal. Still only 22 and plays with such maturity. It's no surprise that he is very much a talking point. I think we all know, like, I want him really badly. I think he's perfect for what Liverpool are trying to do right now in terms of the six because he's not just a destroyer. He controls football matches as well. He's technically very gifted. So I actually believe he'd be perfect for us. And before I go on to the next little bit of the same story, I just whiz through some more comments. Joe Davis, I mate, hope you're okay. Phil Connell, likewise, hope you are good, my mate. A uh, few more afternoon. Dan Ward, hi mate. Are you the Dan Ward played in goal? I've probably done that joke before, so apologies. Um, Barry Collins, big up 
up to the LC family. Big up yourself, mate. Um, yeah, that game last night, Tertian, was an absolute spectacle, wasn't it? Like, I feel sorry for people who didn't watch that. In, in as much as I feel jealous of people who missed the Liverpool game on the weekend like Joe, the producer, who just managed to watch the last two minutes, the two minutes in which Luis Diaz scored, would you believe it? Because he was in Belgium doing stuff for work. Not like, you know, he didn't miss the game, necessarily. Um, but yeah, I'm jealous. I'm sorry, I'm not jealous of anyone who missed that game last night. It was start to finish mayhem. Like, Tottenham were all over Chelsea for 15 minutes. It looked like it was going to be a rout. They just couldn't get out of Chelsea. They were just smashing them to pieces, basically, left, right and centre. And all of a sudden, that tackle, that Udogi horror tackle, which you could have easily been sent off for, just sparked Chelsea into life and Tottenham just lost their head completely. And yeah, as you mentioned, Jim Bobby, a good night last night with Spurs. Yeah, I've never been worried about Spurs in terms of their title credentials, personally. Um, I could have been wrong in that, but I think last night was kind of evidence as to why. I mean, they've lost James Madison and Mickey van der Ven and Christian Romero now. So yeah, good luck for the next few weeks. Um, hi, mate. Hope you're okay. Um, thanks. Appreciate that. And I know a lot of my colleagues will appreciate me bringing that comment up as well. But thanks. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm sure you are as well. Um, Craig Flynn, let's just get the deal done. Yeah, I agree with those sentiments, mate. Absolutely. If he still costs 35 to 40 mil, why didn't we just buy him in the summer, Arib? Um, we, yes, I get the point. But I think it was more of a case of... He wanted to stay true to the club. He was midway through the season. He was midway through a very important campaign. Obviously, the Copa Libertadores competition. They never won that in their history. He's came up through the academy at that club and he decided that he wanted to stay and try and help them win it. And ultimately, he's been proven right, hasn't he, in doing so. And that, for them is almost like the greatest parting gift ever, I guess. And he'll be delighted that he made that decision now. He won't have any regrets, I'm certain. No matter where he ends up in January, you know, Fulham, Liverpool, Arsenal, somewhere else in Europe, whatever, he will definitely back his own decision to stick around and help his club, his boyhood club, win the Copa Libertadores. So I don't really blame him for that. And I actually think, from a Liverpool perspective, that kind of dedication and commitment and that mindset will suit us. I think Jürgen Klopp, if that is the case, would have been delighted to have been told that. So you can't get him now, which is shit. But the fact is, he wants to stick around and help his team. Like, Klopp will love all that, won't he? He'll absolutely love that. So I take the point, but I think there's interesting reasons as to why it's not quite as simple as the likes of the Jew Bellingham chase, as you mentioned here. That came down to money and stuff like that and a little bit of preference, I guess. If this is a preference thing, when it comes to the other clubs in the race for Andre, as we believe it, we win that race, don't we? Like, and the thing is as well, the Arsenal stuff's interesting, but Arsenal have just signed Declan Rice for 105 million, was it? Who is very much their six, and he's their six for the long term. We've got McAllister doing a, a job in there. We're not going to spend too much time talking about what type of job he's doing, but he's doing a job. Endo, who... Likewise, we'll do a job, but remains a stopgap in terms of the squad and stuff like that. So Andre is looking at that situation going, yeah, I can go in there and be the guy. Absolutely. But Arsenal, can he? I'm not sure. Fulham, interesting because of Jao Paulinho and the Bayern Munich stuff that very nearly happened in the summer. So there's a conversation there. But if you're telling me it's a, a toss up between Fulham and Liverpool in terms of where you go, is your next destination. I'll let you answer that one. Um, Paddy Collins says, don't worry, Bobby will be in his ear. Yeah, it's interesting, actually. I did a little bit of... I spoke to somebody, a Brazilian journalist, this morning about Andre. And in preparation for doing so, I looked at the Club World Cup, which is where Fluminense will be going now. Obviously, Andre will participate in that. It comes just before Christmas, around sort of the 17th, 18th December and just beyond. Um, and there's a chance, a chance right now, that Fluminense's first match could be against Al Itihad. That is Al Itihad, um, where Fabinho now plies his trade. So, yeah, if Andre is indeed Anfield bound, then he could be coming up against Fabinho in potentially his last game for his current club. If not, his last game for his current club could well come against Manchester City, which is another thing altogether. So, yeah, a couple of interesting things to keep an eye on there as well. Um, Joe Davis says he watched the game on Sunday. He is definitely number six. We need perfect replacement. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. And like I said earlier, it's kind of... He's not just a destroyer. 
like I think the way we're playing now with McAllister doing it is the perfect sort of precursor to getting someone like Andre in because McAllister obviously isn't a destroyer, is he? He's a technician. But Andre's kind of the perfect blend of he'll win you the ball back, but look what he does with it as well. You know what I mean? So I think Fabinho had that, but Andre seems to have even more with the ball at his feet. Um, Dribbling-wise especially, it looks like he moves with the ball really, really well. Um, yes, I can do that for you, mate. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem at all. Worked with Romeo Lavia, didn't it? Um, yeah, I'm sure you've heard that joke a few times, mate. Being a Liverpool fan and being called Dan Ward. I mean, I know there's a Robbie Fowler who's a massive red, and I imagine there's a couple of Michael Owens, probably a few Stephen Gerrards knocking around as well. So, yeah, I'm sure no one gets sick of that gag when you are called as such. Um, just going to run through a couple more comments now before I jump back into um, the news. Uh, Andre didn't want to leave his club at that point. He would be a great sign and probably help us challenge for every possible trophy this season as well as securing a Champions League spot. Yeah, I think I agree. I think having that sort of impetus, we've seen it with Louis Diaz, we've seen it a little bit with Cody Gakpo. Signing someone of that quality midway through the season can inspire you. It gives you other lads a rest as well. You know, McAllister, Endo, those types. You know, it means they might not have to play quite as much footy and stuff like that. So I think it'd be a really smart signing. Um, and if we are indeed in touching distance with the Premier League in the FA Cup still, which we definitely will be because that only starts in January for us, um, League Cup likewise and Europa League, um, he could definitely help inspire us to a little bit of silverware, hopefully a lot of silverware at the end of the season. Um, Algier Broy, one of our YouTube members, says, Andre, come to the Reds, a South American champion. It'll help us to the league and your way for Cup. I think all, all of it, okay. You heard it here first. Get yourself down the bookies and put a fiver down. I'm not going to endorse nor condone betting but I like the optimism um, yeah please gamble responsibly I feel like I should say probably shouldn't it's not really my place to but do so anyway don't don't waste your money um, yeah Lee Guy yeah I think we all wanted him in the summer but again I kind of respect his reasoning for not moving in the summer like if he said I don't know I don't want to because I'm waiting for Man City, you'd go, whatever, mate, see you later. Or Chelsea, for that matter. You'd say, all right, mate, best of luck. But the fact he said, I don't want to move just yet, I want to help my current team win something we've never won before, I think we could all have a little bit of okay with that. I think we could all make peace with that, potentially. Um, Ginger 96, please say City aren't one that seems interested because it seems to be the perfect Roger replacement without the height, especially if we let Phillips do. Yeah, the Phillips stuff's interesting in that little conversation, of course, but... They've avoided playing Phillips at all costs, haven't they? They've gone John Stones in there when Roger was absent. Um, Rico Lewis, he, he escaped my mind for a second there, the youngster. But yeah, I think um, I don't think City are interested right now. Let's hope not anyway. Um, Spirit says, what happens to Maka if Andre is in? Yeah, maybe that is kind of the answer, I guess. He goes with natural position, but the competition for places in there now is absolutely red hot. Like Gravenberg, Sabozlai are probably the favoured two at the moment. But then you've got Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, throw McAllister into that mix and best of luck fighting out. But that's what we want. We want that, you know, squad depth. We want that sort of high quality options at our disposal. It's perfect. We've got it in the attack. Why not have it in midfield as well? So, yeah, I, I would be tempted to say it's this. But I also think it's important to bear in mind, Andre coming from the Brazilian top flight will take some time to adapt. A completely new environment, completely new league, different football, etc., etc. So I, he might, and I hope he does if it happens, but I don't think or expect him to hit the ground running. I think it might take a little bit of time to adapt, which is the beauty of him coming in January in many senses because he can play a little bit of footy, have a full pre-season, and then, yeah, watch him fly after that next season. Um, just going to go through the last couple of chats before I jump back into the news. No. And we were linked with him a little bit in the summer, weren't we? And not for me. Sorry. Um, Hincapier in January. Hopefully, mate. Um, I've noticed he's not played loads um, for Leverkusen. High-flying Leverkusen, by the way. I say this all every week, it feels like. But they keep winning games. Um, but yeah, I, I still want him. I'm going to talk about another left foot defender in a moment, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm good, mate. I, well, I'm okay. I'm a little bit ill. You can probably tell by my voice still. And I know I keep mentioning it. I, I am after sympathy at this point. Um, but yeah, I'm okay and I hope you are as well. Malik says, imagine Andre just goes in first game and just destroys the league. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, that'd be the plan, I'm certain. But it's also important to remember that might not happen. Anyway, his agent 
has been speaking this morning. I mentioned earlier on, there's been a lot of news, a lot of different sources coming out on the Andre stuff, and his agent has spoke. And he said that Andre came to him and said that Fluminense had no interest in selling Andre this year. I talked to the player, explained it to him, and he bought the idea. We agreed he would only be traded from January 2024. That's from Carlos Late. Um, I want to say his pronunciation of his surname is. Um, they've then offered a renewal of Andre's contract. He goes on to Liverpool, offered a proposal worth around €30 million, Euros, but there was no progress. So that's his agent. And he also did actually several proposals, all of which came to me. He forwarded to Mario, which is Mario Bittencourt, to the president of Fluminense, but aware there will be no negotiation unless Fluminense changed their mind. So, yeah, basically saying the director was absolutely adamant he wasn't going anywhere until January. And on the topic of which, the director himself, Mario Bittencourt, has also spoken to Globo, the Brazilian outlet, today. And he said... Today, we are waiting. There is no concrete proposal for Andre, but we are sure that after the World Cup, which is the Club World Cup, of course, he will play in that competition and then a stratospheric proposal will arrive. It could be the biggest sale in the club's history. We could prob- possibly lose both Andre and the defender Nino, who I think has been linked to Nottingham Forest quite heavily, but we are working to replace them. So, the fact is, it looks like he's moving in January, doesn't everybody? Um, and he's already said there, we're already working to replace Andre and indeed Nino, but that's none of our business. So if they're already looking for replacement, it would suggest that he's very much on the move. And yeah, I'm excited. By I am. I've done lots of different conversations, lots of different shows and all kinds of stuff on Andre over the past few months, obviously following the summer links. And I think he's an absolute essential signing. I really do. And that's not to say... If we miss out on him, I'll be broken hearted. It means our season's going to fall apart and there's no other options out there. It just feels like for what we're trying to do, I said it earlier, for what we're trying to do and what we're trying to become as a side, he's the absolute perfect fit. He really is for me. So, And in terms of the price as well, like even though he said there could be their record ever sale, Romano mentions 35 to 40 million euros. Like, that's bargain territory in this day and age, isn't it? For a high quality player, he's already got a few Brazilian caps under his name. Like, yeah please. Anyway, um, Al Jaboy says, we get Andre and the only thing will be for a world-class defender that, oh my God, we will be awesome. Kwanzaa, I hope, will be that world-class defender. Um, Yeah, I think Kwanzaa's got bags and bags of potential, bags and bags of ability. I'm not putting any sort of intense pressure on him being the next guy just yet. I could almost envisage Joel Matip leaving at the end of the season and Quanta almost stepping into that role of being the third, fourth choice centre-back who can rotate with Canate a little bit. You've got Joe Gomez there still, that type of stuff. I think that's a better place for him to fit now in terms of the pecking order, even next season, albeit he has been brilliant when he's been called upon. I don't think we need to sort of go gung-ho on him just yet. You can't push him too soon is what I'm trying to say. Therefore, I would be more interested in signing another defender. Maybe world-class, ideally world-class, but I just think we need... I said it all summer. It's not news to people. I apologise if you've heard me say it a million times before. We need a left-footed centre-back who can also play as a left-back. Before I come on to news as such... Man up, you are absolutely spot on, and I'm not afraid to admit I am the worst person in the world when I'm ill. Everybody's going to know about it, and I'm honestly just terrible. Like, it's because I've said this before because I'm quite like energetic and I do a lot of stuff, and when I can't, it just wipes me out. It's the worst. So, sorry, everyone that knows me. Um, David Louise. I know it's probably David. It might be David. His surname's Louise. David Louise. Um, Dan is a, a DM. Dan a DM is a must. Hope for Andre and a cover for Tim Akash. Push McAllister forward. Well, on that. In fact, on this note, actually, I'll bring you the Lloyd Kelly news because you all seem so desperate to hear it. Not entirely sure why. Um, it comes from Tuto Sport in Italy, actually. And the reason it comes from there is because Juventus and Inter Milan are two of the clubs interested in Lloyd Kelly. Now, I hear you shout, why does that bother us? It bothers us because the very first paragraph of the article says, Liverpool themselves are now back in charge and the list of suitors is extensive. It goes on to say that Tottenham, Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund are all interested in Lloyd Kelly. But, as I mentioned a moment ago, Liverpool are in that lead for that particular race. Interesting one. And it's interesting because we were linked with him a few years ago. He's left-footed. 
he plays centre back and left back, therefore fits the profile perfectly for what I think we all believe we want. Stroke need somebody else mentioned a moment ago could be a perfect Robbo backup replacement, whatever. Yeah, I think that's what we want. I think that's what we should be signing. He's 25. What else is interesting? A couple of little bits on him, sort of personally and statistically, if you like. Um, what else is interesting about Lloyd Kelly is the fact that he's out of contract next summer. So you can't negotiate for him in January because obviously he plays for a fellow Premier League club. That's only sort of players who play in foreign leagues and stuff like that. But what you can do is you can sign him for free or, or nothing whatsoever. Um essentially, in terms of transfer fee in January. Because if you're Bournemouth and Liverpool comes to the table with 10 million in January, even though he's captained them a couple of times this season, you kind of look at it and go, if he turns around and says, I'm not going to sign a new contract, you've got 10 million there or three in six months' time, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? You're going to take the money, aren't you? So, yeah, in terms of player, I'm just having a quick look now at some of his stats. Um, I always go to FB Ref um, and see who he's compared to. Victor Lindelof is second in terms of similar players. That's not a glowing endorsement. Um, Issa Diop of Fulham is another familiar name on there. And it's not packed full of familiar names. Pablo Mari who's now at Monza, used to play for Arsenal, I believe, if it is the same one, I imagine it is, is another recognisable name on there. Yeah, not full of, not star-studded, let's put it that way, but Lloyd Kelly's a decent enough player for me. Like, he's not of the elite bracket like we've been talking about in Nasho, we speak about in Capier earlier on, Levi Colwell, although I'm not sure he's in the elite bracket now after watching him last night, but he's a solid player. He's got Premier League experience. He's a good age at 25. He fits the bill, like I say, in terms of playing left-back. He's a left-footed centre-back. And if he's free, which he could be, or he's dirt cheap, which he also could be, I think it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, looking at him, he's played seven times so far in the Premier League this season. He's made one appearance in the EFL Cup as well. Um, two appearances at left-back and five and, and centre-back in the Premier League. So it kind of goes to the point about him being that versatile option that we might want, we might need. Um, I'm just going to check his injury history because I've got a funny feeling it's not very good. Because I remember when we wanted him in the first place, he moved to Bournemouth, obviously, and he got injured quite a lot after, and it kind of felt like a bullet dodged. Um, just checking now, we've got a muscle strain in 2020, hamstring injury not long after, another hamstring injury not long after that, he only missed one game for that. And he picked up an ankle injury about a year ago, sort of this time. So not horrendous, um, injury-free for a year as well, which is positive. So yeah, possibly. Um, I would be open to that. I'd rather, <coughs> excuse me, I'd rather go and sign in Capier, in Asho, any of the above, basically. But if it was Lloyd Kelly, and it was like saving money for funds elsewhere for another signing or something, then sound happy days. Because that left back, left footed centre back situation, along with the defensive midfielder, are two of the three unanswered questions I think Liverpool have got sort of on the horizon in the next six months. There are two of them. The other one is probably Mohamed Salah. But we're not going to talk about that now. Absolutely not. Um, Aditya says, Andre Zora made Cavani give up on a clear chance at goal. Yeah, seen that. He passed it back. That was really weird. Um, Daniel Ward returns. Says, what do you think about Sancho leaving United in the summer? I reckon Klopp could get back in, get some life back into his career. I agree with you on the last point. I'm never comfortable taking players from United, certainly not players that have failed so categorically and so badly. I'm not sure. I really wanted him when he was at Dortmund. I was a bit gutted when he went to United, to be honest. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would be sort of the, it would be the, a true sort of Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp story, wouldn't it? If we took Sancho for next to nothing and he turned him into an absolute world beater again, like that would be, not rags to riches, that's far too extreme. But in terms of where his career's at, like pretty much at rock bottom really for Sancho, from what he was anyway, to get him at Liverpool and then to reignite him and to, like I say, spark him into life. It would be not too dissimilar, but slightly different to what he did with Mohamed Salah in terms of the Premier League anyway. Because obviously his time at Chelsea was horrid. Brings him in and look what he's done ever since, you know. Albeit, that was caveated by some good times at Roma and Fiorentina, of course. Um, Dylan Longo says, I actually think we need a Simicast upgrade more than a new centre-back. Yeah, possibly. And again, I don't know if Lloyd Kelly is a Simicast upgrade, but it's that side of the pitch, isn't it? Although, 
triple M X I I. I don't know what that is in Roman numerals. I've, I've never been good at that, so sorry. Um, my back is a serious part needs a vesting. I don't know about that. I can't have that. I'm sorry. And you also returns a Simicast signed a new long term contract, so a left back is defo off. I'm not sure that's the case. I get your point, and it might be, but long term contract can mean a lot of things. It can just mean protecting his value. And if we are going to go into the market for a left back, stroke left side of centre back, then we're going to get the best possible price for Costas Timakas because he's just signed a new deal. Um, that's just another way of looking at it, um, potentially. I'm glad I'm not on my own. Um, yeah, I hope you get better, um, just like I am soon. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen reports of that, mate. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. If that is the case, he would not fit into Liverpool's no-dickhead policy. Therefore, we would not sign him. Um, Dylan Longo says Lloyd Kelly would be good for that hybrid left-back. Well, he's perfect for that, isn't he, in essence? I think Inacio is more perfect for that, to be honest. But Kelly makes sense. Um, and yeah, the Luke Chambers one is interesting. Um, and yeah, yeah, maybe. I've seen a little bit of Luke Chambers now. I watched him a couple of times at the academy. seen him play for the first team twice now, I think, as well, obviously. And he looks sound. He does, he looks sound. But how ready do you want your, your guy to be? You know what I mean? Like Kwanzaa, to his credit, looks more than ready to be a part of the first team squad. And Chambers might be as well. He just might be. But if he isn't, we're going to have to go and sign one. And he's going to have to loan Chambers out for a year, potentially. But I, you, know, you could be spot on. And Owen Beck, I've not seen enough of Owen Beck to really comment on. I know he's Ian Rush's nephew. Um, so the stock is good, isn't it? Let's put it that way. Uh, still not. Still not. Um, good player, doing very well. But yeah, no. No, I'm glad I said what I said at James Will Prowse. I take absolutely none of it back. Um, good try, though. Uh, cheers, mate. Appreciate that. I'm sure I will. I'm, I'm nearly there, to be honest, guys. I am. I'm nearly back. I went to the gym this morning, so that's positive. Uh, means I'm getting closer. Uh, John Summers says, Hi, Dan. Hi, mate. Hope you're okay. Do you think words would be a good replacement if for Salah he looks very good prospect? Yeah. Yeah, he does. There aren't many lads who I'd go, yeah, they could replace Mohamed Salah. And I'm not sure where it is that yet. But in terms of like potential and ability, he's one in that conversation. Bakayo Saka is the obvious one. And there's a couple of others who you could sort of give ticks and crosses to in terms of the boxes and stuff like that. But Flavian Wirtz, the only sort of negative I can, that springs to mind about Flavian Wirtz right now is, I mean, the, the price may be a little bit, but depending on what we got for Salah, if we ever sell him, that might not matter. But it's that injury he has. Um, did he do his ACL? I'll check while I'm talking. I'm pretty sure. A while ago now, because he was a real sort of burst onto the scene as an absolute superstar at Leverkusen, very young, um, like 18, 17 type. Uh, I just check. I'm sure he did a bad ACL. Don't get me wrong, he looks to be fully recovered from it now. He's absolutely tearing it up. Oh, cruciate ligaments. Ugh. God. Um, I just check um, to be absolutely certain. Here we go. The stomach flu we had. That's interesting. Never heard of that. Uh, might be what I've got. Yeah, cruciate ligament tear. 43. His injury record is actually terrible. Um, so, yeah, that would be my main concern. I won't run through them all, but for 19 and 20, again, when he was a kid, very much a kid, he started getting injuries. Then it hasn't really stopped. Um, only like a handful of games here and there. And then, like I say, that crucial ligament there, 43 games he missed because of that. And he's missed a few here and there ever since with different problems. But yeah, brilliant footballer. Absolutely brilliant footballer. And if it was to be him, then fine. There are many, like I said, who you can say, I'm fine with them replacing Mohamed Salah. But I think words might be in that very, very short list. Um, I'll start to wrap up now because um, I've been speaking for a while. Um, last few comments before I do. Dylan Longo says, Lloyd Kelly also gives us a homegrown player, which would make sense. Yeah, what if we've only got one non-homegrown spot left, I think I'm right in saying, um, which hopefully is Andre's. Um, because if you haven't noticed already, I would quite like us to sign him. Um here we go. Do you think we need a backup left winger considering how Jota and Gapo have failed to impress in that role? No. No. We've got Diaz as probably the, the frontline left winger when everything's fine in his world. And once again, I've said it a million times on different shows. Hopefully that's all resolved very soon. It looks like it's getting there, which is positive news. But fingers crossed that is absolutely finished and fine in the very, very um, not too distant future. Um 
but yeah, I don't think we need love left winger. We've got Diaz, like I say, and Jota can do it. Gakpo can do it. Nunes can do it at a push. That is not a position we need to be looking at, um, in my opinion. Uh, Mike's JH says, Andre is a must. Maybe a left-footed centre-back. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. Maybe a left-footed centre-back, but other than that, I think we are decently covered. Yeah, I agree. I think those two points um, are the next two priorities, really. And as I mentioned earlier, a little bit under a breath. The Salah conversation will probably have to happen at some point. Um, yeah, feel free to laugh at Spurs. I I found the Spurs stuff funny last night, and it was a, like I say, it was a mad game of footy, and it was a really good game of footy. But <clears throat> I was never worried about Tottenham in terms of the title race and stuff like that. I hope Liverpool are in a title race, by the way. But if we are gonna be, it was never really Tottenham that were my concern. It remains Man City and a little bit of Arsenal. Um, but mainly Man City. Uh, hi, mate. Hope you're okay. I'm all good. Thanks. Um, I presume you're talking about Lloyd Kelly uh, because, yes, he is English. That is correct. Um, sad. I think I'm done. Uh, yeah, I think we'll get top six, my mate. I'm not sure you're a Liverpool fan. I've seen a comment you put in earlier. Um, but, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Cheers for watching this Liverpool channel and us speak about Liverpool despite not being a Liverpool fan. And nothing wrong with that, by the way, if you are doing that. But if you're doing it just to try and get some sort of kicks, then you need to be spending your time wiser, um, in my opinion. Uh, add it to we shouldn't be thinking about players like Sancho and Phillips who have had off field issues with punctuality and weight. I am not going to comment on the weight one. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. We won't look at them players, and I don't think we should look at Calvin Phillips anyway, underline. In as much as I spoke about James Will Prowse in the summer, and we shouldn't be looking at him, Calvin Phillips is in that exact same boat. We should not be looking at Calvin Phillips. Um, up the Reds, up the Reds. Uh, Owner would be happy if Kelly could see the total. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Is it? A... I like Mark Gahey. Uh, I am starting to wrap up, um, by the way, just so we don't think I'm just waffling for the sake of it. I do a little bit of that. Uh, Wirtz is a midfielder, isn't he? I think he is, in essence, but he's a very attacking midfielder. And I think he has. I, I can double check in a second. But I will be amazed if he hadn't played a little bit in the front line. He says that just before finding out he'd probably played never in the front line. But I'll check anyway. Because why not? I'm sat here at a computer. It makes loads of sense to do so. Um, oh, and Xavier Alonso's Leverkusen good by the way just whilst we're loosely on the topic um, there we go he has played he's only 20 still as well good lord he's been around for a long time at 20 uh, I'm just going to get his all seasons record up because that'll give us the clearest picture um, as to just how often he's played in different positions he's got 12 Germany caps as well just while I wait for it to load here we go predominantly played as attacking midfield that you were absolutely spot on but I think we all knew that 85 times once as a second striker 9 times as a centre forward 7 times as a left winger 4 times as a normal centre midfielder and 10 times as a right winger so at 20 I mean yeah he is a natural fit for the right wing obviously but He's 20. He's got a lot of time to do a lot of stuff yet. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Anyway, I will wrap up. Uh, I'll go through some goodbye comments uh, before I do so, because I like to do that. Thanks, mate. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate you all getting involved as ever. Uh, Craig Flynn, thanks again, mate. Appreciate you getting involved as ever, buddy, too. Um, Kwanzaa is the left side centre-back. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's Joel Matthews replacement. I do. And I'll, I'll, I'll die on that hill um, until I won't, because I could be wrong. Uh, I just want to bring that last comment up. There we go. Uh, who is Lloyd Kelly? That's that's not fair. Um, who does he currently play for? Sorry, I've only got here and missed all this earlier. Feel free to rewind. That's a really old way of putting it. Feel free to go back and watch. But he plays for Bournemouth. He's decent. Liverpool wanted him quite a few years ago. Never happened. He played for Bristol City, I think, at the time. And he moved from Bristol City to Bournemouth. Had injury problems, but his left foot is. Plays centre half, plays left back. He's 25 and he's out of contract next summer. So, interesting. Um, yeah, I've been impressed by Spurs, but they were never really a threat to me, personally. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, anyway, I will say goodbye. Thanks, mate. Um, hope everyone is well. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for getting involved, as ever. It's massively appreciated. Hopefully, next time I'm back, I'm fully recovered so I can stop banging on about being ill because I know it's really boring. Take care, look after yourselves, and, yeah, see you soon. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcast, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.